Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. We are looking at chapter three, which is material and energy balances. And you may feel that you've done some of this material before, but we are going to be doing a much deeper dive than you've done in previous courses. We're gonna start with just a little bit of history. Uh, James Prescott Jewell sort of really developed this concept. He was a brewer uh, from a very wealthy family, and in his free time he did science. But one of the things that he noticed was that there was a relationship between work and heat. So as you would move things, that some of that movement, the work, would make things hot, okay? But you could also use heat to move things and so that could do work and so somehow there was a relationship back and forth between work and heat and he published several papers in this area and did quite a number of uh, experiments it's actually kind of interesting to read about his work if you so desire now one thing that you should have a fairly firm grasp on is the basic material balance right we know as chemical engineers that what comes into a system is either going to stay in the system, leave the system, or turn into something else. In terms of a material balance, we say that the feed is our input, and we also can create new material, so that is our generated material, so generation plus input, minus our output or our product, minus our consumption, what's used up in a reaction, okay, the opposite of generation, is going to be what accumulates inside the system. Remember our point of view here is always going to be on a system. And this is a material balance. Well, we can look at this by lots of different ways, but if we consider total mass, not components, remember in this course we're doing pures, so for total mass, I'm not going to have reactions. I'm not going to have consumption or generation. So this simplifies down to input minus output equals accumulation. The input is the sum of our mass that might flow in or out. So sum of mass in minus sum of mass out is going to be our accumulation, dm dt. If we have steady flow, then what comes in is going to come out and nothing will accumulate, so dm dt will be zero. And if we integrate this over time, then the mass at the beginning and the end, the difference between those is our accumulation. And we can then say that that's equal to the amount that flowed in minus the amount that flowed out over that time period. So this is all about mass, and because we have an entire course in mass and energy balances, I'm going to leave this to you if you feel you need some review. There are some great examples in the book that you might wish to read. We want to focus on the energy balance, which is the first law. And the idea is still going to be the same, that whatever comes into a system is either going to leave or stay, or turn into something else. In our case, that part that stays, the accumulation, is going to be energy that is contained by the molecules, the material inside our system. So that is our combination of internal kinetic and potential energy. So it's our total energy. And so the accumulation is the change of that over time. And if we put it into our variables, it's the mass times the internal energy specific value, one half V squared plus GH. All of those get multiplied by mass. That's our energy. We're gonna look at how it changes over time. Now that transfer in and out can happen several different ways. We have work. Work can take all sorts of different things. One is work of expanding and contracting. So if you have a balloon that's being blown up, that's actually performing work, okay? 
Um, if you have something like a syringe and you're pushing forward on that, right, that requires work to move that material through there. So that's work of expansion and contraction. Flow work is going to be what the work required to just simply make the molecules move in or out of our system. So that's flow work, and that is going to equal P times V. And for now, we'll just say that it just is. And then we also have another kind of work, which is shaft work. Um, okay, I have a swimming pool that has a pump running on it, and that has a shaft that rotates to move the fluid so that it circulates through the pool. That is shaft work, okay? So all of those are various forms of work. And then we also have heat transfer. And those are the ways that energy is going to transfer in and out of the system other than the flow of material itself where it carries stuff with energy in or out. Now, keep in mind that we have a sign convention. So since we're dealing with work and heat transfer, we are doing the chemical engineering sign convention, which is not universal. I know that's a pain. So energy added to the system is positive, and that's both W and Q. They're positive if they are going into the system, and work remove or energy removed from the system, work and Q, are negative, okay, because they're going from the system. So in is positive, out is negative. I really recommend this video. PBS Crash Courses are great quick reviews of an awful lot of material. They have one on the first Z and zeroth laws of thermodynamics, and I really recommend you watch that. I'm clearly not going to make you watch a video inside this video, but I do recommend that you watch that one. Now, when I put all of these things together, Remember, I have the accumulation is the input minus the output plus all that generation. But again, if we don't have reactions, I'm not going to have that part of it. So it's the in minus out. Anything that comes in or out of the system. So the accumulation is ddt of my total energy. So mass times u plus 1 half v squared plus gh. And in and out, I can carry that energy in and out by flowing streams. So that's what this first grouping here is. And so it's the flow rate in <laughs> times the energy that it carries, which is going to be the U and the 1 half V squared plus GH, right? These three pieces. But it also is that flow work. So the PV that makes the material move. Then I also am going to have out the same thing. So mass flow rate, the total energy, plus the work for flow, the flow work, P times V of the outlet streams. And then I have the work and heat transfer that are exchanged with the surroundings. So that's the shaft work the expansion and contraction work, and the heat transfer. Earlier, we had defined enthalpy. It's really helpful to use enthalpy at this stage because U plus PV is equal to enthalpy. And so I can take that U and PV in the flow terms and convert those to an H and it makes the equation look just a little bit better. I realize this is a very long, complex looking equation, right? And so by converting this to H's for the flow in and out, we're using U for the energy contained in the system, then this allows us to account for the work required to make the material flow. If I rewrite this in its integrated form, then I'm going to look at the change. So that's going from final minus initial, time two to time one. Okay, starting at time one, ending at time two. So you subtract time two minus time one. And then the sum of everything coming in 
minus the sum of everything coming out, plus the accumulation of my work and my heat transfer. These are our basic forms of our energy balances. We're going to stop this video at this point in time. If you didn't take a break to watch that crash course video, I really highly recommend that you do that next. And when you come back, we're going to start looking at how we can use this equation and learn that it's really not so scary. I know it looks pretty tough right now. Well, thank you very much for your time, and we'll catch you in the next video lesson.